Now what I'm going to do is to introduce you to the concepts of customizing the Thesis Classic Responsive Skin for Thesis 2.1. And if we come over here, oh, I'm already there. Come on over here. Uh, what we're going to do is, well, and you can tell by looking at the responsinator, right? We're going to add a header image. We're going to change our uh, our colors. We're going to change the font style. Uh, we're going to set up a sidebar. We're going to add some bottom footer widgets and stuff like that. We're going to do all of that stuff here today. And all of that starts in the thesis. Let me go over to skin and the um, design section. The design section of the classic responsive skin is, is where you can essentially change all of your design options. Actually most of Thesis customization is really divided into sort of three places. The first one is the actually the content options. The content options allow you to control what shows up on a page regardless of what its style is. You're not adjusting any style under the content options. What you're doing is deciding what's going to show up. And so for example in the nav menu, if you click on the nav menu here, you have the choice of which menu you want to show up. Now I only have one menu uh, you know, created on the site, so the only one that shows up is the ma main menu. But if I had multiple menus here, I could decide which menu is going to show up there. And we're going to look at the sidebar text box and the attribution here a little bit, a uh, little bit later. But this is where you'll set up content. Same thing is true with uh, with these items here. You can adjust content by clicking on those things and deciding what you want to show and what you don't want to show. Second aspect of it is the design options. And uh, the design options are going to be different from skin to skin. Uh, in this case, what you have is a color scheme that you can set. And then you have a whole bunch of fonts and uh, uh, elements that you can style using this. So this doesn't control what actually shows. It just controls what it looks like when it shows. So um, if you have uh, if you have turned off, for example, uh, the site title in the content section, even though you style the site title here, it's still not going to show because this is in this section you are going to say what the site title should look like if it's showing, and over in the content section, this is where you would say, you know, show the site title. Okay, so that's the, the difference between content and design. Uh, your next section is header image and this is where you can decide or where you can set an image to go across your header. And then finally you have the custom CSS and we're not really going to talk about that today but this is a place where you can add your own CSS code snippets. Uh, more advanced users will just actually write CSS here but beginners um, you know, you may ask a question on a forum and they say, well, here, add this to your CSS, and this is the place you would do that. So, um, anyway, those are the main sections for customizing uh, Thesis Classic Responsive. And everything that I want to do starts by setting the primary font size and the primary font family. Now, the reason this is the case is that uh, Thesis Classic and um, all of the BYOB website skins will employ uh, or do employ uh, Chris Pearson's uh, golden ratio typography calculation. And, and as you may know, Chris is famous for his calculator that, that determines you know, based on the width of the text area and the font family, what size the font should be and what the line height should be and all those kinds of things. All that is calculated from two elements. Well, really from three, but the, it starts off with these two. And that is font size and font family. So 
right now the font family for the and this is for the primary font right so this is going to prevail unless something else changes it so I'm actually going to choose Arial as my font family but I am going to stick with a 16 as the font size you can see this is what it looks like right now with this is a 16 pixel uh, text size in Georgia and I'm going to go ahead and save this and save the design options and if we refresh our page you see now it's all moved over to Arial now we can go uh, we'll, we're going to go along and change some of these things to other fonts later on in the session but we just set the primary font now something that's critical uh, or one of the main things I want to do here is specify the width of these columns because right now these columns aren't as wide as they want them to be and so in order for me to to accurately specify the width of the columns I have to know what the padding width is going to be and that padding width is something that is calculated using the golden ratio typography calculator so I have to start there. I have to start with the text, uh, the font family and the text size and then that will tell me what my uh, padding is. Now you can look it up, right? If you're familiar with how to use Firebug or Web Developer or something like that, you can tell what these are. But I've actually created a cheat sheet for you. If you come over to my resources page here on the right hand side of my menu, click on the resources page come down to thesis 2.1 you'll see there's this download the thesis classic responsive padding cheat sheet and what I've done here is I've taken the the fonts in thesis that are considered to be um, web safe so thesis has some fonts that are not web safe but these are all the web safe fonts and I've tested thesis to find out okay so if you use Georgia at a 14 pixel font size how big is the padding and the answer is 24 pixels if you go to 15 it's 25 pixels if you go to 16 it's 27 pixels okay the way these columns things work is that each column has padding on the left and the right hand side so I'm Arial and 16 points, right? That's what I decided I was going to use, Arial and 16 pixels. So each side has 27 pixels of padding, which means that I've got 27 pixels of padding here, and then I've got the width of my column, and then 27 pixels of padding there. So if I want this column, if I want this part of the column to be 640 pixels wide, then I have to take 640 plus 27 plus 27 in order to figure out what my overall column width is. Same thing is true with my a sidebar. If I've, since I'm using 16 pixels, I've got 27 pixels of padding here and 27 pixels of padding here. And so if I want this to be 300 pixels wide, then I need to add 300 plus 27 plus 27. Okay, that's the long way of getting around to explain that what I want to do is change my dimensions. Right, so I have a choice of one column or two column layouts, and I can put the column on the left or the column on the right. And it comes default with these settings, but this isn't really what I want. What I want is 600 pixel width column, because that's that's what I've pre-decided what I want. So I want 600 pixel width column, and since I know my my total padding width is 54 pixels I really need to say 654 pixels same thing is true with a sidebar I don't want my sidebar to be 280 I want it to be 300 plus 54 or 354 okay save my design options and now if I refresh it now these are bigger Right? It takes up more space and I can put the stuff in here that I want to put in at the size that I want it to be. And what Thesis has done is because I have 600 pixels wide, it has changed 
um, certain aspects of the font style to match the golden ratio topography. And so this clearly is very easy to read, right? That's the whole point of this is to make your website very easy to read. And so um, that's what we've accomplished by setting those settings. Plus, I've decided, you know, what my configuration is and how big I want things. You know, I could decide I want the content on the right. And if I decide that and reverse it, it just does that, right? Now, of course, I don't want that. I want the content on the left. So click out the layout and dimensions. Switch back to left. Save the design options. Refresh it, and now I have it.